Hi guys, today I, I want to talk you about the, the basic uh, analog circuits uh, regarding the op-amps. So, let's start by putting uh, the universal op-amp 2 and let's start also by defining the, the voltages. We will need them. Fifteen volts. Let's call it V plus, and let's call this guy minus fifteen volts and V minus. And let's connect it here, and let's connect it there. Now, for the first circuit, uh, we will see just uh, the the simplest one, which is the non-inverting and um, inverting amplifier this is the this is the simplest how do you design an inverting amplifier just by putting the two resistors here let's call it r1 and r2 and as you know this one here is grounded let's call it this out and as you may as you can imagine the characteristic here is minus r2 over r1 so if i have 1k on 1 kilo ohm and 1 kilo ohm and i just put a sine wave of 1 volt and 1 kilohertz you will expect uh, to have the inverted sine wave. Now, as you may know, the uh, real op amp, real, real op amp uh, have all these uh, all these limits that you need to take into account. And one of the most important uh, is the uh, the bandwidth and the slip rate. So, if I put uh, 100 kilohertz, don't expect to for the op amp to follow so smoothly. You can see the you can see the you can see this problem with uh, just by putting uh, a pulse if you put uh, a triangular waveform or uh, or just a pulse so let me put uh, 10 nanoseconds as rise you should see Okay, as you can see, he is not following smoothly the input since this op amp has uh, this the universal, the universal op amp 2 has uh, all these values uh, that you need to take into account, which is of course is the slew rate. So if I decrease, uh, if I even decrease the slew rate, this is going to be worse. If I, get, I if I decrease the bandwidth as well, let me put uh, 100 kilohertz. This is gonna be horrible. So basically, he is filtering uh, my input signal. Now let's let's do in let's do instead the uh, non-inverting amplifier. just by putting this guy here and ground this guy here and an inverting amplifier has us again 1 plus r2 over r1 if i run again the simulation now you can see directly the problem connected with the real op amp so you have the step signal and as you can see he is not following smoothly the step signal just because of the problem of the bandwidth now we will see that if i put dot param dot step param x list uh, the first value is 100 kilohertz second value is 10 kilohertz and the third value is 
1000 kilohertz and if I call this parameter x you can see the effect of the bandwidth of an op amp let me, let me run and as you and as you can see if the the bandwidth is higher he will try to follow as fast as he, as he can the input signal but if the, the the bandwidth is lower then you are basically screwed so whenever you choose the, the op amp take in mind to consider the bandwidth and the zero rate we can fix the bandwidth to 100 kilohertz and we can change the zero rate as well as you can see the zero rate is the zero rate is how much fast the op amp can follow the input signal so as you can see in my example i put the the signal to, to have a rise time of 10 nano you can say that since the the voltage is 5 volts and that the rise time the t rise is 10 nano you can see that the dv over the t is basically 5 volts over 10 nano which basically in the order of giga ohm so in order to follow this signal correctly you should have uh, a, a very high so you should have a very very fast zero rate which isn't which isn't the case since i am varying uh, um, the zero rate with the simulation so the first so the first simulation this is, is this and you can see that uh, it corresponds to the 10 if instead you choose to follow this curve then you have a 100 kilo ohm so as you can see if if your zero rate is very robust is very robust you can see that uh, he can really try his best to follow but since the bandwidth is still low he won't try he can't really have uh, you can you can't really have a pulse but instead you will have something that uh, he will attenuate so in order to have a perfect a perfect op amp you should put uh, a 10 megahertz rate and now you can as you can see you can have a very segmented a very segmented um, input since it, a very segmented output since it is not filtering in, in any in any case uh, for what regards so this is so this is the so this for what regards the bandwidth and the zero rate which you have to always take into account whenever you design something with op amps. Now, uh, what about the characteristic of this curve? Whenever you design something with the also the basic circuits with uh, with the op amps, you always need to take into to take care about the DC characteristic, as you, you would expect. So, if I take uh, my paint, uh, the inverting amplifier you expect a characteristic out input but whenever the input uh, whenever the input is is positive the output should be negative and so it is something like this the characteristic the real characteristic though has also the, the saturation owing to the v plus and the v minus the same, the same happens for the non-inverting amplifier. You expect the characteristic to be this, and it is, of course, but then it will saturate at the power supply given by the op-amp. You want to see this also in LT spice because whenever you design also uh, some more complex circuits, like for, like for instance the rectifier, you will see some very different characteristics like this, or even something like this or something like this and from this characteristic you should be able to understand what you are doing with your signal if you're rectifying of the wave full wave rectifier and so on so let's see how you can see the characteristic first of all you, you need to, to get rid of this guy and let's just put a DC voltage instead you can put even a zero you don't care honestly now let's let's write uh, s and let's write dot dc v3 
And now um, a menu should pop up if you press the right uh, button. And if you if you choose the start value to be minus 50 volts and the stop value plus 50 volts with an increment of one volt, you should see the characteristic of your circuit. And uh, as you can see, it is exactly as I told you. So the characteristic is exactly as you expect to be of a non-inverting amplifier, but whenever you are reaching the, the power supplies, it will saturate at 50 volts. And this, of course, is something to be expected. Uh, now you can even we can even fix the zero rate, so this is not necessary for a characteristic to have the zero rate uh, to the zero rate variable, and you can even we can even uh, uh, toggle this guy. Uh, um, now you may wonder why it is saturating at minus 20 volt, minus 9 volt. Uh, yes, because the non-inverting amplifier has, has, uh, has, has a gain G, um, 1 plus uh, R2 over R1. So if you have 12, 12 volts, it is reasonable enough to say that it is already uh, saturated. If we come back to the inverting amplifier configuration instead, since the gain will be equal to 1, you should see that the saturation occurs just when you reach uh, the power supply. So if even if I put uh, minus 20 volts and plus 20 volts, you will just see a saturation at 50 volts, as you, of course, expect. So now let's move on to the we have seen the, the two non-inverting the ampli non amplifiers. Now let's move on the um, let's move on the um, on the voltage follower. You, you may and uh, you may ask why the voltage follower is important. Well, and the, and the reason is that basically the voltage follower has some very useful impact on electronics since it will it will be used as uh, impedance adapter as impedance separator sorry so the characteristic is always the same you expect the voltage follower to follow the input unless it is saturated unless it saturates with the the power supply but uh, the most important thing that you want to say that you want to that you want to see in a in a voltage follower is the impedance separation. To do that, you have to analyze the impedance. How can you analyze that? Well, simply by putting the, the voltage. You put the voltage. Just comment this guy. You put a voltage and you put the AC source. Uh, just write AC1. Uh, just write AC1, yes, and now you can uh, you can run the simulation by doing the AC analysis, tap sweep decade, 100 points for decade, 1 milli, 1 gigahertz, and as you can see, now you are going to see the bandwidth of the op-amp, if you reduce that it is until 10 megahertz since I, I decided so. Now, if you, if you reduce the, uh, the bandwidth to 1 MHz, you see that this curve is going to be translated. So let's see, just for instance, if I use dot step param x um, list, and then, as always, I don't, I don't remember the order, let me put 100 kilo, 1 mega, and 10 mega. And let's put the bandwidth as x. Oh, what is happening? And as you can see, you have different bandwidth. So the higher the bandwidth, as, as you can see, the higher the bandwidth and the better it is. I, <laughs> Of course, the higher the bandwidth, the faster your pump will be. So you have only advantages in doing that. Uh, so now let's see uh, how the impedance is affecting your circuit. 
and uh, you can see that uh, just by doing uh, the subtraction between v in and uh, v3 and the current of v3. Now let's put it in linear and as you can see the input impedance is with uh, 50 mega ohm. This is of course uh, a value which is independent from the bandwidth because it is an intrinsic uh, construction of the op-amp since uh, inside the op-amp they're gonna they're gonna be the base of some uh, transistor and here the impedance is very low since the current here is very very low so as you can see it said it's the input impedance is very high and it acts as a separator uh, what about the output impedance well you should put a load as a oh no 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 Let's put a load of 1 kilo as a start. And now let's use V out over V uh, over I of R1. And as you can see, the output is just the, the output impedance itself, since you don't have uh, you don't have any kind of separation in the output, you have just the separation in, in the input and the output will basically be the load. It is also interesting to, interesting to look at, the, at the, the op amp when you have the linear. So to understand the meaning of the bandwidth, um, what is the, the real meaning of the bandwidth? You can probably see it with uh, if you put the, uh, the, the graph in linear as I did now. So if, I, if you have 1 volt at 10 millihertz of 10 hertz, it will just be 1 volt, it will follow the signal smoothly. But if you have something at 10 megahertz, 1 volt at 10 megahertz, as you can see, it will be attenuated to 0 to 1 volt. What is the meaning of this? The meaning is that basically, if you have something which is rising very very fast, like um, an input, like a, a square waveform, and the, and the bandwidth is uh, is slow not and um, you will not have uh, if you have a, um, 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 a faster zero rate maybe you can follow this but if the, the bandwidth is very low what will happen is basically this you will have some sort of, of attenuation since it can't follow since as you can see if the signal is too fast and it can uh, reproductive it can't reproductive um, considerably uh, so I think that this is the so I, in, in this video I wanted to, to show you the the, the, the open basics but uh, at the end of the story I turned out to show you the <laughs> the real parameters of the op-amp so I, it, for me it will be quite a trouble to give a title of this video but let's see that uh, how the I will call this video how the how the how the real parameters affects basic op amp circuits yeah it can it can be good as a title so i think that we, we can close the video now and i will continue if you are let me let, let me show in the comment if you are really really interested in uh, in the in this kind of circuits that we uh, if your opinion I can go on with these circuits, uh, I will be very glad to, to also to explain how to do this simulation in, in Lattice Spice. Thank you guys for watching and see you in the next video.